Brittany here, your plaid clad librarian, back in my craft cave, and today we are going to make glitter jars. Uh, this is not a glitter jar yet. It will be. The first thing you're going to need is a jar or container, preferably something that is clear, otherwise you're not going to be able to see the glitter and the whole project is pointless. If it's glass, that might be the best. Specifically, you want to make sure that something will be watertight because we're going to be using water and it can leak, so be careful with that. You're going to need some water, you're going to need clear glue, or maybe even glitter glue. We're going to do some experimenting with that to see how well it works. And glitter of different sizes, shapes, styles, whatever you like. Making a glitter jar is super easy and a lot of fun. So first off, open up your jar. We're going to take some water and you're going to fill it about halfway. Your jar might be bigger than mine, it might be smaller than mine, that's why I'm saying about halfway, I'm not using exact measurements here. Then we're going to take some glue, this is just some glue I got at Dollar Tree, it doesn't matter if you have school glue or really any kind of glue, it, try and make it clear. We're going to start off with that one and we're going to fill this up until it is about three quarters of the way full. Now the reason we're adding glue is that the glue will mix with the water and it will make the water thicker. We add the glue it makes the water a bit more dense, which causes the glitter to float around for longer and have a lasting effect. Honestly, the amount of glue that you use might be something worth experimenting with. It's possible that less glue works better for you or more glue. It also might be a personal preference thing, so that's okay too. Personally, for me, I'm just impatient with how long this is taking, so I think I got enough glue. Now we get to choose our glitters. I think in my collection that I have right here, I would like to make kind of like a dark spooky kind of thing going on. So I have some black glitter and I have some white that has kind of like a unicorn skin thing going on. It's got like some shimmers to it. I'm not sure if that picks up, but it does. And some silver. These are like some silver flakies that'll be thrown in there. This one says diamond dust. I'm really curious to see how that does. That looks kind of like a white clearish, kind of like stars maybe, I don't know. And let's see how that goes for now. Yeah. So I'm gonna start by tapping in a small amount of glitter into of each of these colors into my jar. If you like specific measurements, why don't you pick like a spoon, like a teaspoon? and you can pour them into that spoon and then everything is measured properly. In my case, I'm not particularly picky about it. I'm just gonna kind of dump it in until I feel like I've got a good, enough, good amount. So I'm gonna add the black and then I'm gonna add that white with the unicorn skin. Maybe a little more. And you can always go back and add more. Like, that's not an issue. You can't take stuff out, but you can add stuff in. We're going to add in some of the silver flakies, quite a bit actually. <laughs> and then last up, the stuff that says it's diamond dust, Woo. let's see how that goes. It's pretty chunky, so you can already see, I kind of have layers going on right here. So I have some glitters floating up on top, water in the middle, and on the bottom, is all that chunky glitter that I had float to the bottom as well as a bunch of glue, which is gross. So now we have some amounts of air in our jar, so I'm going to add some more water to fill it up to the top. Don't go all the way to the top, just so that we have some room to add glitter if we need to. Now I'm going to take my lid and I'm going to put it on top and secure it nice and tight so that no water falls through. And time for shaking. Now I'm going to take my lid and I'm going to put it on top and secure it nice and tight so that no water falls through. And time for shaking. Okay, I shook it up and it's got some cool swirlies in there. It's pretty transparent and I wish that it had more kind of depth to it. And everything sinks down to the bottom really fast, so I wonder what I can do to make that better. It's possible that the glitter that I used each of them are just too big, so they don't float around too much. Also, I noticed that when I shake it really hard, it causes a lot of bubbles. So, first thing that I'm going to do is I just have a little stick, and I'm thinking that maybe my glue did not dissolve well. 
So I'm just gonna get this stick in there and I'm gonna stir it up. And I can already feel it starting to loosen up a lot. Yeah, and even just sitting here, I think it's doing better. So a lot more is just kind of floating around right now. It oddly, it's weird looking. <laughs> So it sat for a little bit here, and you can kind of see it sitting there. And from the glitter that I still see just floating in suspension, which in suspension is it's kind of just floating in the middle of the liquid, it's mostly this really fine white unicorn skin glitters. I can tell because I can see the color shift. Piece. A little bit of black, but not much. So I wonder if I use glitters that are more fine, uh, smaller glitters, that it would hold up better. Probably. So let's put a cap on this one and let's try something different and find out how that works. For this jar, I have glitter glue that I wanna see how that does. And glitter glues usually have a lot of really fine glitters in them. So I'm hoping this works. So just like the other one, we're gonna fill up our jar about halfway with water. Then we're going to pour in our glitter glue. So the other one, the glue didn't dissolve and clearly the glue has not dissolved in this one. I mean, we can, we can see that. So I'm gonna take my stick and I'm gonna stir it up and hopefully help it get all broken up and dissolve better. And which does mean that our water will turn whatever color our glitter glue is. All right, that's already given us a nice, good color base of blue, which is really nice. And I think what we can do is we can add some more colors in here to just give it some more pizzazz. And this white unicorn skinny one seemed to do really well, so I'm gonna add some of that. And perhaps we should stir it up in between times just to kind of see what everything will look like as it goes. Okay. So now it's got some more sparkles to it. I think I want a deeper blue. And fortunately, I got this pack of really small glitters and I have a deep blue and sort of a turquoise blue. I think I'm gonna add those in. Ooh, that's nice. I like the way that looks. It's much more opaque now. And I'm curious to see what it looks like if it settles or when it settles. Eventually, everything should sink down to the bottom if you let it sit there long enough. But all you gotta do is just pick it up and give it a little bit of a shake and it should agitate everything and make it all cool and glittery again. Now, I wonder what it would look like if I add something bigger. Um, not necessarily like these big flaky things, though. These are some really big flaky blue ones. I'm gonna add those in. <laughs> Give it some texture. But other than this, I also have some sequins. Maybe I'll toss a few of those in. I have some purple sequins. That might be cool if I add a few of those in. All right, and we're committed now. And I think that I am done messing with this guy. So I'm going to top it off with some water, seal it up and see how it turns out. Make it nice and tight. Give it a bit of a whirl. And that looks a lot better. So I think glitter glue is a friend of ours. If we don't have ourselves some ultra fine glitter, then glitter glue is a really good trick. So two thumbs up for that one. Two thumbs up in the jar. <laughs> and adding in more super fine glitter is a really good idea. And I wonder, you can probably get some deeper colors if you add like food coloring or things like that. And the sequins, the purple sequins in here, you can kind of see them shift around and play within and they peek up every so often. So it just makes it a little bit more fun whenever they come across. So that's nice. I think that that was a good call on that part. And these are just really cool. Now, glitter jars are, I mean, they're pretty, so there's that, but they're really good for uh, stress relievers or fidget toy type things. They're nice, you can play with them around, move them around with your hands, don't drop them. They have some pretty colors that go in it and things are shifting and moving around and they're nice, you can just kind of focus in on that. Now, a trick that I learned that may or may not work for you, but it's worth a try, is if you're frustrated with something or you're having a really rough time 
or just it's a bad moment for you. Either you're angry or you're anxious or just anything else for really. Your mind is just not in a great place. Grab your glitter jar, shake it up real good, and put it in front of you and watch it swirl. Those glitters are gonna go absolutely everywhere and just put your thoughts into that. Just focus on your glitter jar and over time, the glitters are gonna stop swirling around and they're going to start to settle down. And by the time they start settling down and by the time they start sinking to the bottom, it has given you the time that you might need to calm down or to get your thoughts in order or to just start to relax. And after one shake of the jar, if you're still agitated, if you're still in that bad place, give the jar another shake. Maybe you just need a little bit more time. But the idea is that this is here to allow you to take a moment for yourself, to take that opportunity to take care of yourself, remove yourself from the thing that is frustrating you, that is hurting you, and to just focus on something just for you, something pretty that you like. It's not a tool for everybody, and that's perfectly okay. Not everybody's fidget is exactly the same way as somebody else's fidget. Trust me, I know. But it is cool, and you can see, it's already settled down quite a lot. Now, if you have that, just give another shake and off it goes. Quite fun. Now, obviously, you do not have to make one that is just the size of this jar, or bigger. You can actually go smaller. There are some pretty cool little bottles that you can get, and for something that is maybe about the size of this, perfect for your pocket or your bag, or going to school or for work, or really anywhere where you just kind of need a moment. You need something pretty to have on you. I've seen people make necklaces out of these or keychains and such. Now, if you are going to make a to-go glitter jar, I do suggest that you get something to secure this lid and make sure that it's not gonna come off. Maybe some hot glue or super glue or I don't know what, but you wanna make sure that that is nice and secure. And that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed our little experimenting. At first, we tried it out with our heavier glitters, which you can see it's already sunk all the way to the bottom. And if I turn it over and spin it around again, I still get a pretty cool jar. Not my favorite, but it's got some merits to it, and I bet that somebody likes it out there. So we have that one. We tried it with our glitter glue, which worked out really nicely, and our little to-go bottle, which it's much smaller, but you can already see it's sunk down and just takes a little bit of a shake up to make it all cool. and and swirly again. So let me see what you made. I would love to see what kind of combinations you have. So feel free to comment below or send in pictures of what you made to Teen Services. We would love to see them. And if we get some cool pictures, we might even be able to share those on our socials as well. So for now, everyone have a wonderful day and see you next time. Bye.